Hey everybody, video here for you today. And this Ancient America series, it's kind of gotten out of hand. <laughs> I said in a previous video that I have maybe a, over a couple dozen sites I still want to talk about. Well, that list has gone well over 100, and I'm just now realizing that these mound sites pretty much covered the whole area of the mid and eastern United States here. They were everywhere and they are really too numerous to talk all about so plus i have other places around the world that i want to talk about so which place i'm going to talk about next is kind of difficult and i see comments where people are now getting upset because i'm not talking about the ancient site in their area of the country and well <laughs> that's i don't know what to do there's so many of these places but today i want to talk about one in Missouri. Today we're heading down to a mound site where I think the story needs to be told. We are heading down to a Walmart in Fenton, Missouri. And when I read this story, I knew immediately I would be telling it. Now this is called Gravois Bluff, where this sits upon. And up until 1999, this was a sacred burial site. But Walmart built on top of here and I just want to share this story. Now I try to keep my language pretty clean during my videos but if that goes a little astray during this video well I apologize but this one kind of pissed me off. This comes from Riverfront Times and this article is all the way back from 2001 but I'm sure the people here just want this story to go away but I'm gonna tell it today it says, set high on a limestone bluff, street gold at sunset, the burial mound, overlook the entire Merrimack River Valley. Inside, some of the bodies were flexed into a fetal position, others laid out straight, as Uncle Harold. Still others were bundle burials, the bones defleshed and stacked together. And I'm not going to read this entire thing, but I'm just going to get to the gist of it. It says, what sure is that the dead rested in peace for over 1,000 years or so and folded in the earth they'd loved as their mother earth? Then a bulldozer tore into that earth. Fenton needed a Walmart supercenter. Everybody in Fenton knew the hillocks above Mound Street were burial mounds. But by the time city residents got wind of plans to destroy them, developer Gary Grew had contracted to build a bigger and better Walmart on the site. Missouri is the heart of Walmart country. The world's first supercenter was built in Washington, Missouri in 1988. The 1,000th was christened in St. Robert, Missouri in August 2001. Gru's Fenton Supercenter slid neatly into place in a $193 million redevelopment plan for Fenton's downtown. And just going on here, it says, when we inquired about the archaeological significance of the latest supercenter, Gru offered a single comment. We built a 1.3 million square foot shopping center that's the neatest thing ever built in St. Louis. It's the biggest. I don't like this line of questioning. Well, Mr. Gru, I don't like your attitude. Now I found this article here and here he is, Gary Gru. This developer, Gary Gruy, or whatever his name is, Douchey, whatever his name is. But he thinks this Walmart is the neatest thing ever, ever built in St. Louis. Obviously, no regards for an ancient burial site. And he doesn't even like being questioned about it. Well, Mr. Gru or Gruy, would you have questions if your relatives were dug up and had their bones snapped in half by industrial equipment? or just steamrolled into powder? Would you have questions, Mr. Gru? You uncaring people. It says, at the outset, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources, charged with historic preservation, had informed Gru that any human remains would have to be removed. He hired an engineering firm, SCI, whose archaeologists mapped the site and started digging. They took samples, but they weren't authorized to do pollen and seed counts or radiocarbon dating or document the mound's layers or filter all the soils for bits of pottery, stone, and animal bones. It says no skeletal analyst was on site to examine the bones, which are often so fragile they turn to powder when they're moved, but can unlock a diary of stresses, diseases, diet, periods of hunger, age, gender, 
and cultural practices. Now this engineering firm who had the archaeologists on site, this engineering firm, SCI, well, their project director, Carl Ruman, can comment because SCI signed a confidentiality agreement with the developer. In the initial field plan submitted to the state, SCI wrote, a report will be generated that details the biological, cultural, and physical characteristics of the remains. As it became obvious, no one was prepared to pay attendant costs. The scope of the work shrank. Contractually, SCI's obligation was a simple one. Get the human remains and get out. Deborah Magruder, who hired on with SCI's crew when the first mound was nearly excavated, says, they did that one right. She says that during the first day on the job in February 1999, the crew's members were shovel scraping just the way they're supposed to, lifting thin layers of dirt so they wouldn't miss or damage any artifacts. By the time they got to the second mound where all the burials were, they were so crunched for time that they got approval from Cal, and that's Cal Rhea, the state archaeologist overseeing the dig, to start chunking. We were standing on our shovels, picking up dirt and throwing it over our shoulders. There's no telling what got lost. SCI was glad Magruder had no field experience, she says, because field school teaches you to go slow and they wanted us to go fast. It was pretty messy out there at times. Just before I got started, a femur was found. The story I heard was that the guy working in that area thought it was a tree root and used some root clippers and snapped it in half. Then when they figured out it was a femur, they just covered it and left it half sticking out, and a looter came and ripped it out of the mound. The femur was indeed protruding from within a stone box chamber. So these remains in this burial mound that they just went through in haste, not doing proper archaeology work whatsoever, this, these archaeologists, because they were pressed for time from the developer, obviously, but those remains found in a stone box chamber and we have seen a few of those in this Ancient America series. On February 17, a, a survey crew lifted the tarp and found that someone had dug horizontally into the vault and stolen the bone. It says, Rhea, who has left the DNR, didn't respond to queries about the Fenton dig. We were told not to talk about it with anyone about what was going on. Oh, really? You were told just to keep it all hush-hush? Well, this is a perfect video subject for my channel because I like exposing crap like this. She and five other crew members wrote a letter of a complaint to the state saying they've been told that the developer had no legal responsibility to excavate the mounds and he could blast through them if he wanted to. Well, in July of 1999, the excavation was pronounced finished and as soon as the last truckload of bones was driven away, earth, earth movers leveled the mounds. No one had surveyed the periphery, so if there were bundle burials outside the mound, as archaeologists had found at the Gateway Academy site in St. Louis. The bones were crushed into dust. Bones already uncovered by the dig were placed in 26 metal bank boxes and stored at SCI. On July 21st, 1999, SCI archaeologist Joseph Galley, worried that no official report was being prepared, sent a two-page summary of the findings to the DNR. Most of the burials had been found in the larger mound, he reported. One gray box contained only a pair of articulated hand bones reminding one of the beheaded and behanded individuals in Mound 72 at Cahokia. Two mass burials were found, one with wooden crypt or charnel house that looks as if it burned halfway through mound construction. Most of the human remains, roughly 50 sets, were encountered beneath larger trees, which may have protected them from pot hunters. Two bird bones speared one of the skulls. Large mussel shells, ceramic shell beads, and a drilled bear tooth were found in or above the graves. The mounds could have been built any time between the late woodland and early Mississippian periods, between 600 and 1400 AD. It says the public never heard that information. And it just goes on about just the, the stuff involved in the lack of oversight for this and who really had responsibility and who wasn't notified. It says, Missouri has an unmarked human burials consultation committee 
with two Native American members, but because the committee's role is to advise on reburials, the group wasn't notified during the excavation. Now, I will leave a link below for this article, and there are many different aspects of it, and it's very frustrating, but it quotes a Mr. Kennedy here at the end. It says, Kennedy is relieved that the remains will be reburied, and I guess that was the outcome of this, and anybody who has any information on this can leave it in the comments section, and I would appreciate it. It says, but Kennedy finds the ending bittersweet. I wonder what future generations of Americans will think, he says, his square jaw set rigid. Will they wish the high promontory with the Indian burial mounds was still there? Or will they be awash in thanks for the Walmart Supercenter? And I suppose that is a good question. Will generations in the future, when they think of cultural significance, Will they be thinking of a sacred burial mound? Or will they be thinking of a Walmart supercenter that Gary Grew says is the neatest thing ever built in St. Louis? But here is what the parking lot looks like today in this bluff overlooking the river. Sacred site from maybe as far back as 1,500 years ago. But before the Walmart was here, I guess there was some controversy if this was even a sacred burial mound site, but some people took some pics of the mounds up on top of this bluff. And a few pics were taken of the hurried archaeological dig here, and I guess this is the stone box grave that a skeleton was found. And these are even called cairns in a few articles I have read. Here is a post hole below one of the mounds. And there seems to be some evidence of some burning. But that is the story of the Gravois Bluff Mounds. Today, a Walmart Supercenter. Gary Grew says it's the neatest thing ever. Good grief. But total lack of regard for ancient burial ground here. All these sites, there's a unique story to all these. Well, don't you think Walmart would have enough money? Or... A developer of a Walmart Supercenter would have enough money to give the archaeological aspect of the site some dignity. Why did they have to choose this site in the first place? Sometimes I just shake my head at what goes on, what went on, what still goes on. But that's the story of the burial mounds in Fenton, Missouri and the Walmart Supercenter. Seems people working here were told not to talk about this story. Well, that's why I'm talking about it. Bringing you lost history, some crap that went on, some people that seem to be real dickheads. Hope you thought that was cool, and you all have a very nice day.